channel Lightling Vision. Today we have the privilege of having Mother with us. Welcome, Mother. Thank you, Nathalie. And we have quite a subject today, uh, well, another very important subject. And unfortunately, in Occident, we don't talk about it very much. And we are actually, we don't even talk about spirituality. So it is an honor for us to have you talk to us about karma and re reincarnation. Yes, I'll... Uh... I have uh, very often in other videos mentioned the subject and so uh, I said well now I have to uh, tackle it <laughs> directly um, because it's true that uh, um, especially here in the West when we are talking about karma and reincarnation it is a difficulty because um, well even God and uh, what transcends man is, is a difficulty already. And karma and reincarnation is directly, link, directly linked to this uh, divine uh, guidance. And that doesn't, uh, yeah, that, that doesn't work at all. It's, it's frightening for the, the Westerner. Whereas if you compare it to the East, where it's, um, you might say, an old subject, that has been in the, the Eastern societies for thousands of years and that is uh, still in it, even though in, in, in some parts of the East it's getting away also little by little uh, through um, the pressure of materialism and gain of money and wealth, material wealth. So people lose contact in themselves with those uh, deeper uh, subjects those more subtle subjects. But you might say, um, when you see it uh, in a more global way, um, in the East it's still alive, this subject of ra karma and reincarnation, whereas in the West it's more a problem, it's a difficulty. Because as I already said, it is linked to something that's unseen, that can, as they say, not be proven. It can be in some, some way, if you want to. If you really want to, you can. But before you start uh, making an, an, an investigation on the, that kind of subject, you somehow must already believe in it. And that's a difficulty. So you will, you will make an investigation when you believe in it, at least in some way. And because here we don't believe in it, well, no, nobody uh, is busy with it. I can't say nobody. There are, of course, uh, yes, quite some uh, spiritual movements that are busy with it, more and more. But it's not uh, the average uh, human being in, in the West that, uh, that is uh, uh, on a daily basis occupied with that kind of questions. On the other hand, I have to add that more and more this subject, the last uh, 10 years, is appearing in films. And I think that's a very good idea. Even though it's not always treated in the most profound way, it's, uh, but never mind, it's, it's, uh, it's being sown in the minds of uh, Westerners, and I think it's important. Because, why is, is it important? And that is the, the reason that I uh, try, uh, try to give this explanation. It is important because it uh, explains a lot about our daily lives, about um, why things are going on, um, if there are difficulties and trials, it can lead us to a better understanding of what's happening in our daily lives and also um, in society and even uh, between countries in the rest of in, uh, when we see it uh, on the level of the rest of the world karma and re reincarnation is one of the the ways we can that can give us a deeper insight in what it is about in uh, when you talk about difficulties and obstacles and resistances that we encounter in our individual lives and um, in the whole of, you know, of the humanity and it can also, it's not just the, the, that we can say, well, today I have a problem because in the past um, I have done something wrong. 
that is what I would like to um, change in our um, vision of karma and reincarnation, because it's not some kind of punishment, far from that. It is more a way to um, change something in your consciousness, in your vision of things and in your behavior um, towards yourself and the rest of the world or humanity. The approach of karma and reincarnation in the East is typically um, the attitude of Eastern populations. That's to say it's more passive. It has to do with, um, I have done things wrong, now I have a consequence, I try to carry it with me the best I can, and when I have, um, like in being in a prison, when I have done my time, well, it will be taken off. That is, um, from some point of view, still an immature um, vision or explanation on karma and reincarnation. And I think um, we can in somehow help the East or make the vision of the East that the East had in the past more complete if we add our uh, Western psychology, our Western psychological uh, structure or makeup, and we add something more active and uh, also more analytical, uh, intellectual, and understanding in the right way. I mean, karma and reincarnation as a kind of imprisonment where I have to wait until the day the, the door goes open, that's not the right way to see it. Because it's not something that we have to carry with us or undergo in a passive way, but we Yes, we have to accept it, and that's that's the good thing about uh, the, the West, the Eastern. That's the good thing about the Eastern way of um, seeing those things and experiencing them. They accept them as a reality, as uh, the consequence of certain uh, laws that have been uh, transgressed, transgressions that uh, an individ individual has made in the past. But that's not enough. Accepting it is the first step, but then comes the second step, and then that's what we Westerners can do for, for the more complete view, as I already explained. We have to say then, well, what, can, what can I do in an active way to, to make this karma, to transform it in something positive? Just to undergo it and to, to yeah, not to do anything more, it's not enough. Because, in fact, everything in this universe um, seeks a positive outlet and would like to be creative. So if you have done something wrong in the past, you have um, misled somebody, or you have stolen, or you have been dominating and, and you have not let, let the other, other persons any freedom, that you, in some way you might say that's the past. You cannot do it again, it has been done, and um, you can only draw the conclusion, and that's what you have probably done after your, uh, those uh, incarnations in the past. You have, when you passed over and you came into the, the other world, on the other side of the veil, you certainly have seen that this was not the right way to behave, or it, it was even a bad way to behave, and you want to repair it. Now you come back in another life, and it might be this life, and you want to do it better. That is the first step of, of karmic um, behavior in, in, a, in a positive way. You accept that something has to be changed in your behavior. You want to make, make up for it, you want to do it better. And now the, the, you should see it as something positive and not karma as something that is um, negative, that is um, something that has been thrown on you as a, a heavy load and you have to carry it with you. No, it's more a challenge. Can you do, can you, can you show that you can do it better in another way? And I think that's the first thing that we should change in our vision of karma and reincarnation and that will make it also more understandable for the West that will make it uh, more easy to accept, because man can be active and should be active. 
and in a positive way. And I would like to explain uh, in the second video um, how you can, um, what kind of approaches you can have and, and yes, what's still the deeper meaning of this. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mother. <coughs> so I hope you enjoyed it and that you will uh, subscribe so you don't miss the part two of Karma and Reincarnation. Leave us your comments and we will see you at the next video. So have a good day. Millions of years have gone by since you put your first steps on the earth. Millions of years have gone by since you first came here to birth. Millions of times you've watched it, things and people passed away. Millions of times you've watched it, nothing ever stayed. How oh, come you stay? Your eyes are closed to